Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss JVP, the waveforms of the JVP and what are the things that comes in the question that Canon A wave is often comes in the question paper and what is the Kusmol sign related to JVP and why JVP increase when there is a massive pulmonary, pulmonary embolism. We'll try to find out these things. So first we will go to the content of the JVP. The JVP has a two wave. We have to remember that it is a jugular venous pulse and it has two wave. So one is a wave another this is one wave you can say this is one part of the a wave, and this is the second wave okay so this is one part this is the second part so and where we assess the jvp we usually assess the jvp in internal jugular vein okay we know that the internal jugular vein it combines with external jugular vein and it drains into the superior vena cava it drains into the superior vena cava into the right atrium into the right atrium so because the internal jugular vein, this is internal jugular vein, this is external jugular vein, because this one is quite straight to the right atrium. So any change into the in the right atrium, it will be reflected in this manner. So we assess the JVP in this internal jugular vein, which is connected to the superior vena cava and to the right atrium. Right. So let's go with each of the wave first. So we start with A wave. A for you have to remember that there is two peak here. One is A, one is V. Okay. What does A stand for? A stands for atrial contractions. A is for atrial contraction. Atrial contraction. Means when the atrium contract. Okay. So we can imagine it, the situation here is like this. So so let's say this is the at. Okay. So. So we here, so let's say this is atrium and it's not, I'm just making two pot here, one this is, uh, okay. okay, so let's say this is right atrium, this is right ventricle and this is the passage called tricuspid bath, alright. So this is not correct but I'm just making it to understand, anatomically it don't look like that. So that right atrium is connected to right ventricle and we are not mentioning today about internal uh, inferior vena cava this is the superior internal jugular vein which is the superior vena cava so when the atrium contract when the right atrium contract what's happen when the right atrium contract blood goes this way it goes to the right ventricle and it also there will be fluctuation that side means every time the atrium contracts the right atrium contract it will give a fluctuation of uh, the venous pulsations and as a result it produces a wave means every time the atrium contracts there is a a wave so if you correspond to the ecg wave remember ecg wave that is p q r s t okay okay wait let me draw it here So remember this is an ECG wave and where does the JVP start? JVP always starts after the P wave. Remember this is the P wave. So JVP always starts after P wave means because this is the atrial contraction part, atrium contracts. So when the atrium contracts, then the blood goes up and down. Okay, then it produces A wave, it produces A wave. So JVP starts after P wave, remember that. It starts after the P wave. Okay. It starts at the P wave. So A wave is always and always found after the P wave of ECG. Remember that. Okay. So atrium contracts and so when we start JVP, remember the A wave when it is produced, it means the tricuspid valve is already open. It is already open. So when the right atrium contracts, so blood goes this side and some blood also because of the pressure, they it will show a elevation. So this is the internal jugular vein, and this there will be a pulsation here also. So this is a wave. This is creating a a wave here. Okay. Now what happened? From right atrium, blood has moved to right ventricle. Okay. And the blood, so it immediately when the right atrium contracts, it shows a a wave. Then there is a process of X descent. This is X descent, X descent, 
okay x descent so now the blood is from the right atrium is going to the right ventricle blood from the right atrium is going to the right ventricle so pressure in the right atrium is falling down so pressure is falling down which is producing x descent which is producing the x descent then what comes in the middle there is a interruption here so when this blood is emptying into the right ventricle and the right ventricle is now gradually filled up now what will happen tricuspid valve will close so there is a closure of tricuspid valve so this tricuspid valve will close so when the right ventricle has filled up now right atrium has emptied okay again i start so right atrium has contracted producing a wave so blood from the right atrium has gone to the right ventricle so now right ventricle is full with blood and tricuspid valve has closed so when the tricuspid valve closes and the blood has strike this closed tricuspid valve it shows a peak like this this is called c wave so this c wave is because of tricuspid valve closure okay so this c wave is because of the tricuspid valve closure so blood is going to the right ventricle and right ventricle is filled up and c tricuspid valve is closed and it produce a wave small wave okay which is recorded in the jvp and it gives c wave so you can see there is a c wave but why the x descent is still continue even after c wave okay the question is that why the x descent it is still continuing the tricuspid valve is closed here so it blood from the atrium is not going to the ventricle then why this pressure is still falling down the answer to that is now after the tricuspid valve has closed right ventricle has gone for systole it's contracting so what happened right ventricle has contracted so once the right ventricle has contracted so we know when there is right ventricle contracted there is some empty space created here there is some space creation free space so because of free space this right atrium it becomes enlarged so right atrium becomes enlarged so as a result the pressure is still falling down and that that explains why the x descent is still continues okay so answer to that why the x descent still continues when tricuspid valve is closed so x descent is continuing even after tricuspid valve is closed because after tricuspid valve closed this part is when the ventricle is contracting after tricuspid valve is closed right ventricle goes for systole so when the right ventricle is contracting there is free space generated here because right ventricle becomes smaller so some space is created there so in this free space right atrium takes the, that that free space and it is enlarged so pressure it has gone little bit more down which is creating x descent now x descent has been done and what happens in the what is happening in the right atrium it is filling with blood okay so from inferior vena cava vena cava and from superior vena cava and tricuspid valve is closed remember and it's filling up so blood is filling up so when the blood is filling up it giving a pressure and it is going for v ascent so this is right ventricle is filling up and this when the right ventricle as more and more blood is filling up we can see this wave in the internal jugular vein giving the v ascent so this is giving the v ascent so this is means right ventricle is filling up now when the right ventricle ha, uh, sorry right atrium has filling up so when the right atrium is filled then what will happen when the pressure is increase then tricuspid valve will open so tricuspid valve is open and blood has going freely to the right ventricle from atrium to ventricle that explains why descent okay so that is in short for jvp so jvp has two descent one is x descent one is y descent this y descent so here what happens here tricuspid valve opens so here the tricuspid valve opens and there is y descent so these are the components of jvp okay there is two peak a and v and there is a c this for tricuspid valve closer x descent y descent so these are the components of jvp now we know what is the, what is a wave a wave is produced when the atrium is contracting okay 
Okay, let me explain it here. So this is atrium and this is ventricle. Okay, we just make two separate circles so that we can understand it better way. Okay, so this is ventricle and this is atrium. So, okay, this is good. Let me make it here. So this. So, this is atrium and this is ventricle. Okay, this is right atrium, right ventricle. Okay, so right ventricle, right atrium. All right. So, what is Canon wave? Canon A wave, which is mentioned. So, if the atrium contracting and there is tricuspid stenosis, remember tricuspid stenosis, okay, tricuspid stenosis, stenosis means narrowing, if it is stenosed, okay, if the tricuspid valve is stenosed, so what will happen? So, when the right atrium is contracting, blood is not able to go to the right ventricle in a smooth manner, so it will what? It will create a increase JBP pressure. The JBP will be rise because blood cannot go this way in smooth manner. So there will be increased pressure upwards. So there will be, we call, it's a giant wave, A wave. Okay, there will be, or the A wave is exaggerated. The A wave will be, normally we can see A wave, then in that case, when the tricuspid valve is stenosed, we can see A wave is exaggerated. It is quite bigger than A wave. But, in some conditions, we see the A wave is quite big, what we call canon A wave. So, if atrium is contracting while the tricuspid valve is closed, when that can happen? If it is closed completely, it is not yet open, but atrium has already contracted. So, when the right atrium is contracting against a closed tricuspid valve, then you will get a giant A wave that is called Canon A wave. And if you remember, that is third degree heart block. So, it, when there is depolarization from atrium, it is not reaching the ventricles. And the ventricles are contracting at its own rhythm, atrium are contracting at its own rhythm. So, we know that is third degree heart block when these are not synchronizing with each other. It means when there is a third degree heart block, don't forget to look for JVP, you'll find a Canon A wave. Why? Because A wave is produced because of atrial contraction. So there will be Canon A wave if the tricuspid valve is closed completely. That is in, we call AV dissociation. Means atrium is not talking to the ventricles at all. They are contracting in a different manner, AV dissociation. So in case of third degree heart block, third degree heart block, there will be canon A wave, remember that, third degree heart block. But if there is tricuspid valve stenosis, then we get a big or giant A wave, not canon A wave. There will be A wave is exaggerated, but it is not so high that it can, it, we call it canon A wave. So when we get increased A wave, it means when there is a tricuspid stenosis. So next point is that what is Kusmal sign here? So normally, what happens when we inspire, when we are inspiring, we are taking inspiration. So what is happening here? There will be large, this right ventricle is becoming quite large and lots of, there is an increased venous filling. There is increased filling of the right ventricle because of suction pressure. Because of the suction pressure, there is increased filling of the right ventricle, normally. Okay, so that is physiologically, their JVP goes down during inspiration. But if due to some reason the JVP don't go down when there is inspiration, instead of going down, it is increasing. So that is called Kusmal sign when JVP increase on inspiration. So it often comes as it often comes in MCQs. What is Kusmal sign? So Kusmal sign is JVP is increasing during inspiration. So when JVP increase during inspiration, then we call this Kusmal sign. Okay. Next question is often it is discussed in many times that why there 
is increase JVP in pulmonary embolism. So JVP usually don't increase in pulmonary embolism, but it can increase in massive pulmonary embolism. So let me explain it right here that what happens in embolism. Okay. So these are the two lungs. So this is the lung and you see this is the pulmonary artery. And let's say there is an embolism here. Let's say there is a pulmonary embolism in the pulmonary artery, in the pulmonary capillaries. So where this blood is coming from? This blood is coming from the right ventricle, right? This is coming from the right ventricle. It is coming from the right ventricle. So this from the right ventricle, the blood goes to the lungs. It goes to the lungs. So if there is a massive pulmonary embolism, massive pulmonary embolism, so what will happen here? So what is happening? So if there is a massive pulmonary embolism in this pulmonary artery here, okay, so what will happen? Right ventricle cannot empty the blood during contraction, during systole, right ventricle could not empty completely in the lungs, in the pulmonary circulation. So obviously this pressure which is not going the blood, if the right ventricle cannot empty completely, so where this pressure will go? This pressure will go to the right atrium and right ventricle and right atrium and increase JVP. So there, when there is massive pulmonary embolism, there is always an increase in JVP because this is, there is enough back pressure. Okay, there is another question here. What happens when there is tricuspid regurgitation? Okay. So let's imagine another condition. What, what is the change in JVP in tricuspid regurgitation? Okay. So this is we know this is right atrium. And this is right ventricle. Okay. So right ventricle, right atrium, and this is the tricuspid valve. So we are discussing tricuspid regurgitation. So now let's imagine this is tricuspid valve is closed. Okay. So we know this tricuspid valve where it close, it close in C wave, it gives a C wave. Okay, it gives us C wave. So here this is A wave and sorry, not exactly here. Yeah. C wave, this is C wave. So here is the tricuspid valve closed. C for closed. Okay, the tricuspid valve closed. So after the tricuspid valve, what is happening here? After the tricuspid valve is closed. What is happening? Ventricle goes for systole. Once the tricuspid valve is closed, ventricle goes for systole. Ventricle is going to contract now. So ventricle contracts and empties the blood to the pulmonary circulation, right ventricle. So if there is regurgitation, means tricuspid valve don't close completely. So when the right ventricle is systole, when the right ventricle will contract, then some blood will escape because there is regurgitation. So tricuspid regurgitation is a condition when blood is escaping to the right atrium from the right ventricle. So when there is improper, incomplete closure of the tricuspid valve. So blood is escaping here to the right atrium from right ventricle. That is in tricuspid regurgitation. So if blood will escape, so what will happen? There will be, so when the blood is escaping after this, this part, you know, this part is the ventricle is contracting. So ventricle is contracting, so blood is escaping, so there will be exaggerated V wave. So this V wave will be exaggerated because of increased blood coming to the right atrium during contraction. So this part will be which is the venous filling part, this V for venous filling. So there will be already some amount of blood is coming here. During ventricle contraction there will be some blood is coming here, so it can cause exaggerated V wave and sometimes this V wave is superimposed with C wave. <coughs> this V wave is superimposed with C wave. So that can happen. Okay, so what happens in tricuspid regurgitation? There is exaggerated V wave. Remember V wave. This is the part when tricuspid valve close. Now what are the cases when JVP increase? So when JVP is increased means what? When, when the right ventricle is not able to expand Okay, is not able to take the blood from the right atrium. So what are the causes can be when right ventricle cannot take the blood from the right atrium when it cannot expand. So what are the conditions that right ventricle cannot expand properly, cannot take, take the space when there is already when the pericardium is quite stiff, 
like pericardial effusion pericardial effusion is one condition when jvp is increased because right ventricle cannot take the blood from the right atrium because right ventricle cannot expand so pericardial effusion is one condition another condition there can be you see the cardiac tamponade and there is constrictive pericarditis so constrictive pericarditis is another condition and restrictive cardiomyopathy so these are the common conditions when jvp is increased when pericardial effusion constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy restrictive cardio myopathy so these are the common conditions when jvp increase and that is uh, that always comes in the exam so what are the conditions that lead to increased jvp pericardial effusion constrictive pericarditis restrictive cardiomyopathy so what are the condition that is similar to this three causes in this three causes like in effusion pericardial effusion or constrictive pericarditis or restrictive cardiomyopathy right ventricle cannot accommodate it cannot expand properly so it cannot accommodate the blood coming from the right atrium so if it cannot take the blood coming from the right atrium obviously the pressure will go in upward direction and cause increase in jvp <coughs> so these are the things that are required when you study jvp when this canon a wave a small sign and why it increase in embolism and what are the parts of jvp and what are the conditions that cause increase in jvp thank you